Good morning, everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Um, on behalf of USEC, Jonas Leones and ASEC Gilbert Gonzalez, of, which is, who is the concurrent director of the Environmental Management Bureau, I'm attorney Ivy Joyce De Pedro, as introduced po, um, to speak on um, the Extended Producer Responsibility Act of 2022, Salient Features. And I entitled it as the EPR Act as Government's Initiative Against Plastic Waste. So I, I assume that most of us, if not all, have already read about this EPR Act of 2022. It lapsed into a law last July 23, 2022, and became effective last August 2022. Uh, August 12, 2022. Next, next slide, please. So, of course, borrowing the words of Yusek Castello a while ago, this circular economy is at the heart of this EPR Act of 2022. Of course, our advocacy is for us to transition, to transform, to shift from our habitual linear economy to circular economy. As we know, the complex waste challenge that we are experiencing is a result of linear economy model, which follows the take, make, and dispose process. This linearity is also contributing to marine litter and significant GHG emissions across the chain. Increasingly, there has been a shift from waste management to circular economy, acknowledging the need for a more transformative approach and recognizing the multiple benefits transitioning to circularity can offer, including the economic growth, more equally shared benefits, and more sustainable relationship with nature. Pursuing a circular economy offers a strategy and a pathway that could potentially first reduce GHG emissions across the economic sectors and value chain by transforming the way products are designed and used. Of course, for it to become more recyclable and reusable, um, producers would have to look into their production. Next is to derive more value from products through better product design, increased value retention of materials, and diversion of waste from landfills. It also creates new investment and job opportunities, enhances local and global competitiveness, and improves resilience and vulnerability to economic shocks. In this way, the life cycle of products is extended and waste is significantly reduced. When a product reaches the end of its life, its material materials are kept within the economy wherever possible. This can be productively used again and again, thereby creating further value. The newly enacted Extended Producer Responsibility Act, while not the only solution, is an important enabler to accelerate our transition to a circular economy. Next slide, please. So also, I want to focus on the National Plan of Action for the Prevention, Reduction, and Management of Marine Litter, which is, of course, one of the government's initiative in the prevention of marine litter, one of which is for the mainstreaming circular economy and sustainable consumption and production initiative. So strategy to po ang EPR Act in this National Plan of Action for the Prevention of Marine Litter. Of course, there are other initiatives from the government for the prevention of marine litter, such as the participation of the government or the Philippine government in the Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee to develop an international legally binding instrument on plastic pollution. We also have assistance to different local government units in the management of plastic waste. And also the National Solid Waste Management Commission is in action whenever they pass a res resolution, of course, declaring some... Um, things such as plastic straws and steerers in the list of non-environmentally acceptable products and packaging. Next slide, please. So this and uh, Extended Producers' Responsibility Act is the initial answer to the long-running question from the environment and local government sector. What is the accountability and responsibility of product manufacturers, producers, and importers for the generated post-consumers waste. Of course, adopting and institutionalizing in this EPR Act is 
for um is plastic packaging waste from post consumer waste as mechanism and as an environmental policy and practical approach first to efficient waste management focusing on reduce reuse and recycle for the development of environmental friendly product that advocate the internationally accepted principles on well of course the sustainable consumption and production circular economy and primarily producers full responsibility throughout the life cycle of their product especially its post consumer or end of life stage because as we know plastics actually outlive us it will remain in the environment say for example 400 years that will reach our daughters granddaughters and grand granddaughters and who will be responsible throughout the life cycle of those plastic packaging that will become marine litter so that will be answered by this enactment of the epr act of 2022 Next slide, please. So the EPR Act of 2022 mandated the obliged enterprises to phase in or establish EPR programs for plastic packaging wastes to achieve efficient management of plastic packaging waste, reduce uh, production, importation, supply, or use of plastic packaging deemed low in reusability, recyclability, or retrievability, and plastic neutrality through efficient recovery and diversion schemes that is mandated for the obliged enterprises to register their EPR program within six months following the effectivity of the law. And that is what the law itself said, no? that within six months from the effectivity of the law. So, the law became effective last August 12, 2022. The implementing rules and regulations, of course, we were able to come up with that IRR with the help of our development partner, UNDP. And that was signed last January 24, 2023. And it became effective last February 17, 2023. So next slide, please. So who are responsible for this for the implementation of the EPR program. Of course, product producers who are obliged to implement EPR programs are those large enterprises. Well, of course, our legal basis here is the Magna Carta for MSMEs, RA 9501, which stated that large enterprises are those enterprises that have an aggregate one, uh, more than 100 million assets, excluding the land where in the um, from which the particular business entities, office, plant, and equipment are situated. So, whenever the company has assets of more than 100 million, then they are considered as product producers, which are obliged enterprises to implement EPR program, as long as they are generating plastic packaging waste. So who are these product producers? They may be brand owners. So whoever enterprises that attach brand to their commodities are considered product producers who sells or supplies and commodity under a brand label or identity using a product it produced or a material supplied to it by another manufacturer. Say, for example, they are importers and they repack the goods to which they will be selling to the market, then they will be considered as brand owners. Product manufacturer, whenever directly or indirectly, such as contract manufacturing, producing their products under their brand or importers of consumer goods. Because of course, going back to our NPOA ML that we have to actually prevent um, marine litter in our environment, the importers should be the ones responsible that, um, that post-consumer waste or plastic packaging waste um, will become will eventually become marine litter in the Philippines. That is why importers of consumer goods are also considered as product producers here in the Philippines. MSMEs, as a general rule, next slide please, are, are not covered under the EPR Act of 2022, but they are highly encouraged to practice EPR voluntarily. Say, for example, we are very optimistic that our MSMEs could 
um, transition to become a large enterprise in the future. So as early as now, even if, even if they are considered as MSMEs, they are already knowledgeable on how to implement EPR program. Because later on, I will tell you that if um, that MSME would become large enterprise, say, for example, 2026, and the plastic neutrality target is already 60%, it will not go back to the original 20% when they register in 2026, but they already have to comply with the 60%. But of course, exemption po dito ang ating franchises when the total value of assets of all enterprises carrying the same brand, label, or trademark exceeds that of a medium enterprise. Or for example, a certain franchise or a food stall has many food stalls all, all around the country. So we will have to consider the aggregate value of the assets of that franchise. And for purposes of this law, while an individual food stall may be considered as an MSME, but it is carrying the brand, the, the company or the head office of that company would have to implement the EPR program for its brand. Next slide, please. So what are the plastic packaging covered by the EPR Act? We have four classific yes, classifications. First are the flexible, such as the sachets, labels, laminates, and other flexible plastic packaging products, whether single layer or multi-layered with plastics or other materials. Second are rigid plastic packaging products, whether layered with any other materials, which include containers for beverages, food, home, personal care, and cosmetic products, including coverings, caps, or lids, and other promotional items such as cutlery, plates, drinking straws, sticks, tarpaulins, signages, or labels. So those are the products which fall under our rigid plastic packaging. Next classification are plastic bags, and the fourth are polystyrene. So for purposes of... Um, implementing the EPR program, the IRR provided that for this phase-in period, year 2023, the plastic footprint of our obliged enterprises would be self-determined. So it's up to the obliged enterprise to come up with how much plastic footprint they will declare to us in the National Ecology Center for purposes of the computation of the plastic neutrality target. Next slide, please. So a lot of, ah, yes, um, we, of course, we have to take into consideration as well the wax, the waste analysis and characterization study, which falls um, for those products um, falling under the plastic category. Next slide, please. So who are responsible to implement EPR? Um, as I said a while ago, those obliged enterprises whose assets are more than 100 million pesos as an obliged enterprise or individual, a voluntary MSME may also implement its own EPR program. So as the second mode for those companies under the same umbrella, for example, a group of companies may form a collective to implement their common EPR program. Or those companies or obliged enterprises, two or more obliged enterprises, plus maybe a voluntary MSME, may form their own PRO, Producer Responsibility Organization, as a viable platform in the implementation of their EPR program, or they may authorize a PRO for the implementation of their EPR program. So we have existing PROs already, which have already registered with the National Ecology Center. Next slide, please. So as time goes on, no, we discovered that there are possible other possible iterations on the modes of compliance of the EPR law and not just with the strict um, wordings of the law no, that obliged enterprise may um, implement its own EPR program for some part and may authorize another obliged enterprise another, or another collective or another PRO for the implementation of its EPR program. So obliged enterprises, collectives, and PROs can do that. 
they may partner up with other obliged enterprises, with other collectives, or with other PRO for the implementation of their EPR program. Two or more? Yes. Next slide, please. So it is a sample illustration of the EPR program flow. As you can see, those in green would have to represent the recovery schemes. Now, from the obliged enterprise, the, the, on the left side is or are the mechanisms of the obliged enterprise on the upstream measures such as redesign or reuse or, or recycle in their production. And the, the red line uh, represents um, that it um, already transmitted to the market its product for consumption of the consumers. Then after consumption of the consumers, it will be collected primarily by the local government unit, which is the uh, primary implementer of RA9003, or other waste collectors or aggregators and diverters. So the green lines represents the recovery schemes, which may also be um, considered for other reusers, recyclers, or for other technologies of waste to energy, waste to fuel, waste to concrete, and other treaters. And lastly, uh, for safe disposal to the SLFs. Of course, the blue line represents the diversion. We actually have two phases in the implementation of EPR program. That is recovery and diversion. So it doesn't end with recovery, but of course, we need to see your diversion methods, your diversion techniques, who are your partners. And of course, all of those um, programs should be subject to independent third-party audit. As you can see, it is circular. Next slide, please. So we also, we were also mandated from the DNR to come up with a national framework for all types of product wastes. And that will be issued in another department policy in the future. But for purposes of the IRR, we integrated the national framework on plastic packaging wastes, which are um, consisting of six strategies for the upstream measures and six strategies for the downstream measures. For the upstream measures, these are the strategies by the obliged enterprises whenever their products as are their production pa lang po ito. It's the, the products are not yet transmitted to the market. So what could the obliged enterprises do as part of the upstream strategies for the reduction of non-environment friendly products? So first, adoption of reusable products or redesign of the products to improve its reusability, recyclability, or retrievability. Second, inclusion of recycled content or recycled materials in a product. Third, adoption of appropriate product refilling systems for retailers. Fourth, viable reduction rates plan. Five, um, information and education campaign schemes and appropriate labeling of products, including the information thereon for the proper disposal of waste products. Next slide, please. So this, next, yes. The downstream measures, as you can see, those are product waste recovery programs aimed at effectively preventing waste from leaking to the environment. At any rate, all these strategies are in the IRR. The technicalities of each of these strategies are found in the IRR. Take note that these strategies may be um, integrated by the obliged enterprises and it is not mandatory on their part. For example, number six, partnership with LGUs, communities, and informal waste sectors because LGUs may be partners of the obliged enterprises, for example, in collection, waste collection, or in diversion if the LGUs have MRFs, for example. But these are strategies that the obliged enterprises, enterprises may mix and match in the implementation of their EPR program. Next slide, please. So these are our plastic neutrality targets, which are already in the law. So 20% for the year ender 2023. And as I've said earlier, for this phase in period, it is self-determination by the obliged enterprise. 
and every year thereafter ha and don't be mistaken because other obliged enterprise are telling me that they are just mandated to implement EPR program until 2028 no forever po ito <laughs> next slide please um i just want you to uh, i just want to emphasize the components of the epr program because that is what we are actually looking for in the epr registrations the seven components of the epr program and a lot of obliged enterprises are asking for the format while this is not the official format but of course you can have this as for your reference now because first Um, component is the specific type of plastic packaging material and product brands that the obliged enterprises would need to enumerate the plastic packaging materials used in their brand. So, yeah, for purpose, for example, um, enumerating their brands and what the uh, we, we have a subcategory under flexible and rigid that they have to categorize kung ano po yung mga ginamit nila doon. For example, in shampoo industry, they they used sachets which fall under the flexible plastic packaging. And for rigid, bottles, cups, dispensers, so yan po yung ilalagay natin dyan. Take note that we also included a portion or a column for the other packaging materials used for the products such as paper, cartons, aluminum cans, because these are considered voluntary disclosures. Later on, I will tell you. Next slide, please. Sorry. So take, a, take note of this, the seven components of the EPR program. Next slide, please. Yan, that is why I'm telling you this is a voluntary disclosure. We are, uh, well, we, we do not uh, require the obliged enterprises to disclose the, the other types of product wastes, but that will be very helpful in the National Ecology Center because we are mandated by RA 11898 to come up with an assessment within one year from the effectivity of the EPR Act on what products should you know be in next in line For, um first lang po ito si plastic packaging waste so other types of product that will be very very helpful to the to us the implementers no for us to know what other product wastes would you know become eventually marine litter that is why we will put that in our priority list for inclusion in the EPR for the years to come. Next slide, please. Perhaps this is the last, yes. Um, some important things to note. Number one, non-registration is one of the offenses. So please help us in reaching out to the obliged enterprises for them to comply with the registration. Actually, real talk, um, the, the theoretically, the registration should have already ended last February 12, 2023. But, you know, we are still catering the applications for registration of obliged enterprises dahil as much as possible, we don't want to penalize. But, of course, we need to implement the law. Next, follow the brand for purposes of the determination of plastic footprint. However, offsetting is not brand specific but class specific because the the law termed it respectively so if you are generating flexible plastic packaging you have to recover and divert flexible plastic packaging as well next it covers plastic packaging waste regardless of content because a lot of um, people from the industry are asking what if their product is covered under re6969 So that is our answer, regardless of content. Well, if you want to recover your products which are under RA 6969, your recovery should also be governed by RA 6969. Take note of the components of the EPR Act under the IRR. And also we introduced this geographic implementation and rollout plan because we need to see that you are branching out up to the farthest LGUs for recovery because Um, a lot of stakeholders were asking us in our public consultations, mostly in the coastal areas, like, paano naman kami if the obliged enterprises 
would focus on the urban areas. That is why there is this geographic implementation and roll-up plan that we need to see who your partners are in collection. Perhaps you could attach in your um, EPR registration, your MOA, your contract, or any agreement with waste collectors from the farthest barangays. And um, plastic neutrality does not add with recovery. Waste diversion methods and the products should be indicated as a required disclosure. So we need to see your mechanism and your technology in waste diversion. Next slide, please. So thank you for listening. If you have further questions, just email us at eper at emb.gov.ph. Thank you.